speaking of patterns, I think it would be really cool to start making my own spooky crochet patterns. Um, because, like, I, I highly recommend Alt Knot's channel, who does similar things. Um, hers are very be um, the beginner friendly and more focused on like living in a cold climate because she lives in Min Minnesota. I live in California <laughs> and have a low heat tolerance so just for that my designs would probably be different and it's, it's not that I'm worried about like stepping on her toes because I I've mentioned this in her lives and she's been like, yeah, you know, do it. We, we, we need more spooky crochet patterns. And I, um, I agree, but let's see. <laughs> but, um, the other differences I was, as I, as I think as I thought about it, I realized, yeah, I would have a very different niche under spooky crochet pattern because my style of being gothic and spooky is very different from hers because it's it's a huge um, um, umbrella. Mine tends to be more like I want it to be sparkly and ornate and delicate, full of lace. And speaking of lace, like many of my patterns would probably include a lot of it um because that's what i do that's what i love and mine would not be beginner friendly probably but i mean it's it takes all types really i i know i know that there are knitting patterns out there that aren't that that, that tell you yeah this this is going to take a, a bit more of an ad, um, the advanced knitter but people still do them. So I'm I'm thinking about starting that. Um, I don't want to burn out too quickly while I'm trying to move out of my parents' house, but it's just something kind of exciting to think about. And Right, let's um let's transition into talking about my Etsy and kind of floss talk as in embroidery and crochet. So my Etsy is called Thirst Pixels. And right now it's downloadable cross stitch patterns based on my pixel art. Um I, I had help from friends who cross stitch in helping to make sure that they're um, actually good patterns because I, I admit I don't cross stitch a lot myself, but I, I do pixel art and I, I do like in doing um, embroidery, but I do it more freehand. So I thought, well, it'd be kind of fun to just try out one of my own patterns just so I know um, and have more of that personal insight into what what I might need to change or like just how how it stitches up I guess I'm gonna stop and start the camera because I notice we're we're almost at 40 minutes and at least pre-editing and um, I want to make sure that we don't have any problems. <laughs> okay, we're back. I forgot to do this. Apologies if you heard that. I, I mean, obviously you heard it, but like if, if it spiked. Um, <laughs> so I, I watched a basic, you know, how to cross stitch 
um, video and started sl slightly freaking out because I was like, they mentioned these things in that you'll have in your pattern that I don't have, like um, the um, stitches you need and the the list of materials. I, I do have the list of DMC floss colors in colors and symbols. So, um, but that's really the only thing I have besides the pattern in several different sizes, just so it's um, easier to read. So I, I might go back and put in like the pattern dimension and then I, I was wondering if there were other things I would need to put in, so I asked my cross-stitch friends. And one of them very helpfully um, just now told me, um, thank you, Star, if you're watching. Um, told me that um, for pixel art, I probably just want to stick to, I guess, the basic cross stitch which is I guess it gives cross stitching its name <laughs> see I'd, I'm kind of new which feels weird since I'm selling patterns but like still so I think it's the one that looks like an X actually yeah I was I was told by this friend that it is so that's each of those is one square on the pattern and which corresponds to a pixel or like blown up it's much bigger than a pixel, but it's it's a square, like the, the equivalent of a pixel. And so that's kind of reassuring that I didn't have a huge gap in what people would need for my patterns. Because I, I do want to make them good enough that people want to buy them. Um, I'm coming up on a year of having an Etsy shop, and I not expecting to immediately succeed, but I, you know, haven't had many sales, so, <laughs> um, but um, I'm just going to keep going until, until I get somewhere, and the other thing is that I, I realized, or I, I found out that, I, I don't know if Redbubble really suits my needs. Um, I, I realized I might want to check out the, the quality of the products that they send, like with your work printed on. And, um, it's just so much work to take an image from like 70 by 120 pixels all the way up to a resolution that Redbubble can use for their products. And I, I have to um, zoom in and then screen cap it and then stitch the pieces together multiple times. <laughs> so um, I, I was thinking about how feasible it would be to start just selling my my own stickers in my Etsy shop because that that does fit under thirst pixels um, and that way it would be um, I think much more I have a much wider customer base because not not everyone cross stitches or wants to learn a craft like so, sometimes you just want a sticker that's just there and also, since it is the um, original form that the art was in, it it's it's easier to translate it um, into a sticker, I think, than the DMC colors. <laughs> there are fewer DMC floss colors than um, RGB colors, so I have to spend considerable time sometimes trying to match them and sometimes I just can't match them even considering that I have a, a warning that it may not perfectly match the the digital image and so in that case I 
um, use the color picker to grab the the floss colors that I like and change the image so that I'm not doing like false advertising. But with stickers, I, I wouldn't have that problem. So, but I think I'm going to have to wait again until I get out because I want to have a, a PO box and like space to store and pack up my products. I just don't have that here and I, I can't really get to anywhere since I um, the bus system is not super great around here and despite many efforts I just haven't learned to drive yet <laughs> so maybe someday But yeah, so the the pattern that I wanted to put onto my um, one of my shirts that I'm working on kind of altering, I'll show you the shirt first. one of these tunic shirts kind of or it's sold as a tunic dress thing it came from a thrift store but I got it because um, it has the the v-neck with the well not really v-neck but like the medieval style v-neck with like it the tunic with the lace up and and by the way it's all black i cut the sleeves off because i i don't like sleeves on on my arms at least not tight ones and it has a like pin tucks going down the front which is cool and i thought it'd be fun to transfer one of my patterns onto the back but I realized I'd have to create a grid of some sort, so I looked up gridding, which is a thing you can do, and I, I might just um, create a grid on this fabric so that I can put my art on it. And the one I wanted to do is... I'm going to put it on screen now. It's um, one of my pictures of Gwyn, and it's actually the cover of my album um, called After My, my Vows. It's, it's the one about just my love songs and ex experiences as a as a new god spouse and coming to terms with do i feel brave enough to come out of this closet i'm so glad that i'm out now because i hated being closeted with that but i was so scared of what people would think so anyway it's on a black background and done like it's kind of an a silhouette or like the the outlines of the figure are done in white and two shades of gray and it's Gwyn against a starry sky with very long white hair which is how I often see him um looking over his shoulder at you with this just really intense look like very piercing and it's called soul soul soul's desire which is one of the things i call him because it's it's kind of one of the um the epithets that he gave me to call him and it's true so i want that staring at people on my back <laughs> and the nice thing is it's only three colors 
aside from black, which could be the the color of the canvas in this case. And I would probably add some like freehand black roses and thorny vines to the front because that's basically my signature. So Yeah, I think it would be cool to um, try out some of my other pieces too, but all of these hobbies like require time and energy and materials, so it's kind of hard. <laughs> but I did want to show you a couple more of them. I will have to censor these because well, there's a reason I jokingly call my art pic pixel titties. <laughs> so, let's see. Okay, this one. It's new actually it hasn't shown up in the shop yet i think and it it is a self-portrait from before my top surgery obviously <laughs> also mine weren't that big but anyway it's it's a person from the nose down to their like hips nude with like gray or like sil silvery hair. Mine is golden, but it was just an artistic choice. And they have um, fre fre freckles and like a little half-turned smile. Um, like one of their lip, one of their sides of their mouth is up, and um, they have this amazing choker. If I do say so myself, because I I made it. It's a crochet choker. Um, let's see. I'm trying to decide if I want to show the actual thing. Not yet. It's it's a very special sacred item that I made for my um, Vicaro initiation, and I did wear it like that because it just felt right. Like. It, it just felt right to be like bare chested like yeah i'm a guy and this is somehow like i guess in minoan culture it, from what we know it just kind of fits anyway um so i made it out of black crochet thread um and a very very tiny hook and I I added some um, different beads and dangly things that um, like there was a line of tear teardrop beads at the actual choker and then like there were a few overlapping loops that hung down and then had dangly like larger dangly beads and it went almost down to my waist and I had some silver wire which I crocheted the black thread around too so it's just a really intense piece and I think I also had a black ribbon that wove through the neck piece so um, I'm very happy with that. I don't know what I'm going to call this one, but the file is currently called Fe Fe Feast Your Eyes, because I, I like to kind of have a, a cute and f f flirty pun with the titles of my work, like oh, look at this amazing choker that I made, and if you want to feast your eyes on other things, that's fine too like that that kind of feeling so 
Um, then let's see. I'm looking for one of the mermaids that I did. Um, I have a surprising amount of mermaids in my pixel art. Hopefully I can find the bigger version of this one, but I have the small version right now. Um, it's a mermaid with green hair and green eyeshadow and lipstick and she's kind of looking down and she has light green like sheer sparkly arm um, arm warmers I really love showing the way light plays on different fabrics in my art and the fact that I can do that in pixel art is amazing and I've like it's it's amazing to me that it's possible and also I've gotten compliments on it so that's one thing that I'm really proud of um, and so one reason I wanted to show this one is um, so obviously this is one of my figures of col color she's a um, dark-skinned mermaid and I I had kind of an interesting experience as like when when I was uploading puzzles to the nonogram website which is where my pixel art started um, I realized that it's like there's just an one of those inherent biases in the system because the I, I first you ha you have to get your puzzle past the automatic al um, the algorithm or something that checks to see if your puzzle works, and they want a certain amount of white space just so that it, um, people have something to solve because it's a puzzle. And even if I'm not doing a figure who's um, skin is blank white which you know i'm i might be but um these days i actually do like a real skin tone i i i used to leave this the this, this skin tone out but um in in different art but but if it's a lighter skin tone i can and the the site tells me oh you 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 need more blank white space so so that people can solve your puzzle i mean so so that it's harder to solve and not just um easy i can i can add more um highlights um and it 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 looks fine but if it's a dark figure like a, a dark skinned figure then the highlights are going to be at most kind of golden or tan it doesn't look right to have bright white highlights so that's something interesting that I've I've noticed and and I I, th I think it's good to just think about it and um like it's it's still worth it to have art featuring people of color obviously so it's it's just something that I guess I I wanted to bring up um, I don't know if I'll get this up before the end of the month, but it is still Black History Month in the U.S., so happy Black Black History Month. But, so it just, I mean, these issues are always important, but it just seemed appropriate now. The other interesting thing was, so I had a friend who was helping me make sure that I was not making any um mis mistakes in how I port um portrayed darker skinned people 
just like things I didn't know were bad or something because uh, I, I just wanted to make sure that I was doing it res res respectfully and one thing this person pointed out was that you kind of like it's it's good to make sure that the shadows and highlights are still rich um in one of my other artworks on this site I had um I had gone with more of a grayed out shadow uh, in part of the image the um the original image had more of a rich shadow but the site would not let me use that color it was um, sometimes the the site just fights you on colors because it it says that they're they're too close and i think um it would be different obviously in an actual cross stitch in something that's just created for to be art or a cross stitch pattern but that's why some of mine like there's a a definite a definite shift in color like it's it's not just a um subtle flow because they they were made for for a site that wants you to have colors that it thinks are different enough although really Sometimes it lets colors through that the human eye can hardly tell apart, and then other times it says these two colors cannot be told apart, but humans can easily tell them apart. I I mean, if if you're not colorblind, obviously, but um, so it's it's a weird and frustrating sight, but it was so fun when when I was making nonograms for it, um. And I'm glad it got me started in my pixel titty adventures. So the the color thing with the site isn't like I'm not saying that as an um ex as as a reason why, oh, I had to do this like use these colors. But that is why. So, um Huh. I was expecting the maximum file size warning, but it's not here yet. Okay. So anyway, oh by the way, this one's called Lady of Sea Foam, and I have at least the large version, possibly also the small version, on my Etsy shop. There are two versions because I had to make it bigger so there'd be more white space <laughs> for it, for the nonogram site. So that's that's why. Coffee break. One of my things that I do with the pixel art is um, I theme them after various pride flags. And I also draw my characters sometimes. So I did that. I did both of those for... Where is she? Oh, yeah. This is my main character, Tarlin. I love her so much. Um, she has... So, sort of like the other one, this is a, a person from the, like, just under the eyes to about the hips, and she's wearing a black shiny corset that's pink and purple. Um goes right up to the underbust and she has a choker with a butterfly on it and um fingerless gloves which are kind of her signature and she has like wavy black hair you can't see this because i've censored certain areas but i like doing the lips in the same three shades as the nipples 
to tie everything oops, to tie everything in because in a, in a nonogram puzzle it's weird if you have two dots of this one color over here not that i would do nibble dust two dots unless it was a really small puzzle then i spend a surprising amount of effort making sure the nipples look right <laughs> in my pixel art uh, um, appreciate me so anyway this is tarlin uh she's bi so that's why it's and oh, I forgot to mention blue, blue, pink, and purple, but as well as black, because she's a she's a goth girl. Um, and her symbol, when when I was making her my main character, I was like, okay, so my symbol is the black rose, so she needs to have a a gothy symbol that's not quite the same but kind of similar. So hers is the black butterfly. So just shorten to butterfly because it's kind of weird to call her black butterfly. Like her symbol is butterflies that are black, but like black butterfly sounds weird given, I mean, she's white and so am I. So I'm like, hmm, I don't, I don't know <laughs> if there are implications. So, um. I just heard the cats again. They're not my cats, by the way. They're my siblings. So, like, one of my boundaries that I try to set in this house is that I don't take care of other people's pets unless asked. Like, if they're in trouble, I will let someone know or do, or, like, help them out if I can. But usually I'm like, that's your responsibility. So, that's why I'm just mentioning it without going to check on them. Also, I know they're fine, usually. And at this point in this house, I'm just like, I'm so done. So, anyway. So, yeah, that was Tarlin and my collection of pixel titties. I have several that are based on my deities as well, and I don't usually say, I don't usually mention which ones, because I feel weird about it, unless it's one of the ones of Gwyn, when he's presenting male in my art, because there are quite a few of him that are, um, like, femme Gwyn, as I see him. I'll let you guess which ones, but, like, one of them is, um, um, sorry about that. One of them is Ice, Ice Goddess. You can, you can go find that one if you want to. Um, usually when I have a figure that's purple or blue skinned in my art, it's because I see Gwyn in my head when he appears to me as basically ca Caucasian-ish, but he doesn't look human. It's hard to describe, so it feels weird to draw him with, like, peach skin. <laughs> so I'm like, well, maybe I'll just give him a different non-human skin tone, so... um. Anyway, what else was I going to show? I really hope the noise reduction works as well this time as last time, because otherwise I'm going to have to cry, first thing, ask Brian for advice, second thing. And three, third thing, re-record, which I can do, but I don't want to do any of those except ask Brian for advice. That's always, that's always good. 